Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ahmad Dayatulhad and this is Highlights in Radiology. In today's episode, we are talking about the radiological findings or features of a very, very uh, important neurological uh, disorder, and that is multiple sclerosis. So we will talk about the different criteria that we see in the MRI to diagnose and to follow up patients with multiple sclerosis. First of all, let's talk about the definition of multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a common, chronic, acquired, demyelinating disease. There is stripping of the myelin sheath surrounding the nerve fibers of the human body. So, it is the second most common cause of neurological impairment in young adults. The first cause is trauma, and the second cause is multiple sclerosis. It should have two criteria to diagnose it, clinical criteria. It, it, the features or the findings should be disseminated in time and disseminated in space. And what that means is, when disseminated in space, there are multiple lesions in different parts, multiple lesions in different parts of the brain, and disseminated in times means the lesions occur at different times. So there are multiple lesions, different parts, different times. These are two main criteria to diagnose multiple sclerosis. Of course, there are multiple types of MS. Uh, the most common one is the classic type, the classic multiple sclerosis, which is called the charcoal type. And there are other types that is that are much less common, including the tummy factor multiple sclerosis, the Marburg type, which is an acute malignant type, the Schiller type, which is diffuse cerebral sclerosis, and there is the ballo concentric sclerosis. However, and due to their rarity, I will uh, talk only about the tomifactive uh, multiple sclerosis in addition to the classic type, of course, in this episode. And the last three, they are so rare uh, and we do not have time in this episode to talk about them. So if you want to know more about them, you can Google them. So the classic multiple sclerosis or the chatcode type, first of all, it has a peak occurrence at around 35 years of age with obvious female predominance. It's about two to one, female to male ratio. And the radiological features that we look for is almost exclusively by MRI. We rarely see anything by any other modality except the MRI. First, the earliest sign that we see is what's called the dot dash appearance. It's the early feature in MS. You see this dot dash, dot dash, dot dash, in the subcalosal surface, subcalosal subependymal surface. It's a subcalosal uh, ependymal areas of T2 signal hyperintensity. Basically, I find performing a sagittal flare images, that's fluid attenuation of virtual recovery sequences, uh, is very helpful in patients with MS. So try to make that if you're suspecting MS. This is a very progress type of dot dash appearance. They tend to coalesce with time, forming this continuous line with some nodularity. It's also a dot dash appearance, okay? So, when the disease progresses and demyelinating plaques or lesions start to appear, first of all, we need to know where is the location of these lesions. Most commonly, they tend to be juxtacortical and cortical in nature. One simple trick here is that they must touch the cortex. They must touch the cortex. And we will talk about that in the following slides. Just keep in mind, they must touch the cortex. And also they happen in the brainstem and in the periventricular white matter, in the centrum semiovale, like here, this is the centrum semiovale, periventricular white matter and in the brainstem. And one of the most distinguishing sites is the temporal lobe, the corpus callosum, and the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, they tend to be peripheral in location, like you can see here, these are T2 hyperintense fossa here and there. Now, 
Again, let's look at the MS lesions. We can see that there is a lesion here, and now a lesion, another lesion starts here, so they are disseminated in time. This is a T1 post contrast. You can see there is another lesion here and another lesion here, so they are disseminated in time and space. This is early and later, early and later. So earlier the lesion were less, and now they are more, and again in the post contrast images, so they are disseminated in time and in space. Now, regarding the juxtacortical lesions, they are specific for MS. However, I'm sure that all of us find it difficult to distinguish changes of small vessel disease, that's a normal aging process, normal aging, from MS plaque. So how do we differentiate that? When you see a hyper-intense area like here, be sure that it touches the gray matter, the cortex, like here. It touches the cortex and there is no black, no black like this between the lesion and the cortex because if there is any black white matter on flare images, of course, there is any black line, this is probably not an S plague, okay? It's probably uh, just aging process or small vessel disease changes. One of the criteria that's used to help diagnosing uh, multiple sclerosis is what's called Dawson fingers, which are typical for MS, which are areas of demyelination along the small cerebral veins that run perpendicular to the ventricle, like you can see here. Sorry, like you can see here, this perpendicular, and they must be elongated, perpendicular to the ventricle. In this direction, they are longer than wide. Okay, these are what's called Dawson fingers. And the enhancement, post-contrast enhancement, will be present about one month after the occurrence of a lesion. Let's see another prominent case of Dawson finger. You can see here, obviously, very big fingers. And why do we call it Dawson fingers? Because if you look, they look like a finger on a glove or something like that, like here. So these are Dawson fingers, specific for MS. Brainstem lesions, brainstem lesions, typically they occur peripherally. And why do they occur peripherally? Because the nerve fibers in the brainstem are peripheral, and it's a disease of the nerve fiber, multiple sclerosis. And they usually, the brainstem lesions are asymmetrical or not uh, homogeneous, not uh, bilateral symmetrical. For example, we have these areas of T2 signal hyperintensity and we have this and uh, this area of T2 signal hyperintensity. So which one is MS and which one is small vessel disease? Well, that's easy. This one is more symmetrical, more homogeneous. This is just small vessel disease. It's normal aging process. While here it's more asymmetrical and um, irregular. So this is, uh, these are lesions of MS. Now, temporal lobe involvement is very specific for MS. We don't have much of temporal lobe involvement in small vessel disease or in other diseases that might simulate MS, but temporal lobe involvement, it's very suspicious for MS. You can see there are multiple areas of T2 hyperintensity in the temporal lobe bilaterally. They are uh, involving the subcortical U fibers here and there. Sorry, just let me clean this up. The subcortical U fibers, and there is no T2 hypointense signal, no, uh, no gray matter between the plaques and the cortex. So this is very suspicious for MS. Now, when we see lesions of MS. What do we need to do? We need to give contrast in order to detect whether these lesions are active or they are burnt out inactive lesions. In MS, studies have shown that if we give double the normal dose of contrast, okay, first of all, double the normal dose, and we do a delayed image, that's like after 10 to 15 minutes from the injection. We don't do the imaging immediately after injection. We give the uh, contrast and we keep the patient waiting for 10 to 15 minutes, then do the uh, MRI image. This will show more sensitivity and specificity to the post-contrast enhancement. 
So we have double dose and delayed image. And you can see here, this is MRI, T1, post contrast. You can see these lesions are enhancing here and here, while these are not enhancing because they are burnt out lesion. And later you can see a lot of, uh, after a while they repeated the MRI and there are multiple burnt out lesions without post contrast enhancement. Again, we can see here in this image, this is a flare. This is a flare image, axial, you can see multiple uh, plaques of MS in the periventricular periculosal region and with giving double dose contrast and delayed post contrast acquisition, some of them showing post contrast enhancement, indicating active lesions. Let's talk a little bit about tamifactive MS. It's a variant of multiple sclerosis. First of all, the patient must have established MS. They have the usual type, charcot MS, and they develop large, aggressive, demyelinating lesion. It looks like a brain tumor or, or abscess or something big, but it's just a variant of MS. So on MRI, we will have a large intraparenchymal lesion, which is usually has less mass effect than expected from a lesion this size. For example, here you can see there is a large lesion, intraparenchymal lesion, and the mass effect for lesion this big, I mean, the brain should be like completely compressed and herniated to the other side, but this is not the case here. So it's relatively mild mass effect compared to the lesion size. And when you give contrast, it shows peripheral post-contrast enhancement. Sorry here. This is a post-contrast image. And when we give contrast, it has a peripheral post-contrast enhancement, but has a very characteristic uh, enhancement of an open ring. This is not complete ring, it open. There's an area of no enhancement here. So this is not complete ring enhancement. It has an open ring enhancement. Again, another example you can see here, this is a post contrast image. Here, it looks like a complete ring. If you take it in coronal plan, it's very obviously incomplete ring enhancement. And this is the Flare image, it looks like a mass or sort of metastasis or abscess or whatever, but the open ring enhancement and the presence of known MS patient help to distinguish uh, that this is a tummy active MS. Uh, spinal cord lesions are something that's very important to look for. Uh, they have characteristic appearance relatively. They are small in size. They are peripherally located because the white matter of the spinal cord is in the periphery while the gray matter is in the center. So it's a disease of the white matter, so it affects the peripheral part of the spinal cord. And the cervical spinal cord uh, is the most common part of the spinal cord to be involved. The plaques or the lesions are usually less than two vertebral segments in length, less than two vertebral segments. For example, in this T2 sagittal image, you can see this is a lesion that is less than two vertebral uh, segments in length, again this one and this one, so presence of spinal cord lesion with posterior foster lesion or temporal lobe lesion is like diagnostic of MS, you can't diagnose it from here. And uh, if you see here in the, this post-contrast image, you can see that this lesion is enhancing here and on the T2 it's obvious it's peripheral and it's less than two, segment, two cervical segments in length. And if we go to another example, we can see that it, uh, the lesion here is present, enhancing post-contrast, it's obviously peripheral, and if you can take an axial image, you can see the lesion is peripheral in, uh, in location, confirming that probably this is an uh, MS plaque. So, this was all for today. See you next week at 5 p.m. with another episode of Highlights in Radiology. This was Dr. Ahmad Abdul Wahab. Bye-bye.